This is a one-way bearing. It only spins in one direction and locks up in the other. But what makes it so special is it's 3D printed in one go. All of these moving parts are printed at the same time and the entire assembly comes off the machine ready to go. And in this video, I'm gonna walk you through my process of getting this thing to actually work. So let's get started. How's it going guys? Angus here from Makers Muse. If you're familiar with 3D printers or you've seen them before or at trade shows, you've probably seen something like this. This is a 3D printed bearing and it's a bit of a party trick for 3D printing. You see, 3D printers lay down material line by line, layer by layer, which means you can create objects with moving parts that are captured inside. This bearing has not been assembled it's been printed like this with the balls in place. So I was thinking, if you can design a ball bearing, I mean, it's not the world's best, but I mean, it works. Could you make a one-way ball bearing? That is one that only rotates in one direction and locks up in the other. So I did a bit of research and found out there's a few different approaches for creating a one-way bearing or specifically a one-way clutch. And there's the Sprague clutch and the roller clutch. There's a few different ones as well, but I'm gonna focus on these two because that's where I started. The Sprag clutch uses sprags, which <laughs> makes sense in the name, and they're these weird shaped objects which are continuously in contact with the inner and outer surfaces. And then when you rotate in the opposite direction, these sort of force themselves into the material and create a lot of friction and resist movement and rotation in the opposite direction. But the thing is, these clutches need very close tolerances and no clearance, like they're always continuously in contact. So I didn't really think it was suitable for 3D printing all in one go when you want the parts to freely rotate and move around each other, not weld together. So I looked around and found an alternative type of clutch, which is the roller clutch. Roller clutches are known to be simple and rugged and they can transmit a high amount of force and they basically have a roller with a ramp behind them. So when the clutch rotates in one direction, the roller is free to spin, but in the opposite direction, it rides up that ramp and quickly binds up against the outer and inner surfaces, stopping it from rotating in the opposite direction. And I thought, hmm, even with a bit of clearance, you could make that thing bind up by making it go up a ramp. So I started my first design using the basis of a roller clutch as my inspiration. And here it is. This was printed in a really cheap pink ABS on my Up Mini 2. And instantly we have a problem. You see, we have to have clearances to make this print all in one go. And look, 3D printing isn't that accurate. This is FDM and even a point two millimeter clearance is like difficult to achieve. I have a clearance and tolerance gauge here, uh, which you can check out if you wanna test your machine to see what clearances are capable. But like anything below like even 0.15 is the best you'll get. And the thing is these cylinders just aren't, aren't in there tight enough. There's too much wiggle room. So they rotate round and they don't align properly. But what gave me hope is that this actually does kind of work sometimes. Depending on where the rollers are, it kind of works, which is surprising because the actual design of a roller clutch has springs, which keep the rollers pushed in to a certain position. I'm not using the right terms, by the way, I'm not an engineer, but basically they have springs and you can't really design in springs into an all-in-one print. But I thought, okay, well, I'm gonna see if I can make one that has actual real balls in it and it isn't printed all in one, just to see if I could get something to work completely. And that's what this was. I'm putting B-roll here because I've completely misplaced it. I'm not sure where it is, but it's printed in two halves and it has eight millimeter ball bearings in it. And it also almost worked, but it didn't really resist the, ro the reverse rotation very well. You could easily overcome it, which was surprising. So back to the drawing board. How do we make rollers that don't spin around in the space they are using tolerances and clearances available to us with FDM. Well, I thought, what if I put a taper on both surfaces? So the roller would no longer be a cylinder. It would be like two cones facing each other and the outside rails uh, meet those. So it can't spin around in its little socket, but it can still move back and forth on this rail. And I did a test 
And well, you know what? It works. Better than I could have imagined. It's only eight millimeters thick. I was actually gonna make it thicker, but you don't even need to. And the thing is, this rotates really cleanly in one direction, but then the other one instantly binds up. Straight away, instantly binds up. But what can we do with this? Well, do you guys remember this? This is my two-way, two-one-way mechanism. I found it in the 507 mechanisms book. It was just a very basic diagram and reverse engineered that diagram to make a model which you could 3D print. The full video is here, it's very popular. But the mechanism demands that each side is only able to rotate in one direction and it locks in the other. And I used a ratchet system for this. And the ratchets work, but they're quite loud and they're quite fragile. So I thought, okay, can I get this and pop it into this? And does it work? Well, let me show you. It actually works. So no longer do we have that ratcheting sound. We just have the sound of those little rollers bouncing around. It does bind up a little bit sometimes. That's probably just because of the, uh, the inaccuracy of the two outer and inner surfaces lining up. But you know what? That's pretty good. Uh, in terms of an all-in-one, one-way bearing on each side, a roller clutch, allowing that movement, I couldn't be happier with that. So I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how much torque can you transmit through this before the uh, the mechanism fails? And will it fail by just slipping or will it fail catastrophically? Well, I would like to find out as well. So I modified it into this. And this has a hex bore, which is designed to fit a big fat Allen key. Now, to be clear, this is not gonna be scientific at all. Not nearly as good as what Stefan does over on CNC Kitchen, so Stefan, if you want to give this a shot on your measurement devices, by all means, I'd love to know what you can get. But let's see if this actually skips or if it catastrophically fails. And there we go. Bam. Okay, what happened? Ah. Uh, they just seem to skip back. Okay, let's try that again. Will it blow up or not? So they just bounce back. That's really cool. I really thought these tiny rollers would actually delaminate. There's only like two and a half millimeters of meat between the middle of them. Okay, that's really cool. I did not expect it to have that amount of slip in it to save it from self-destructing, which means this might be a viable test if we scale it up. So, I do have this one. This is a two times scale uh, one way bearing, roller, clutch, thing. And um, it works okay, but what I'm thinking is we could scale this a little bit more and we could attach it to a bicycle and then I could try to pedal and use it as a roller clutch on a bicycle. So if you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments, guys. And just before you head off, I have updated the two-way to one-way mechanism with these bearings. So if you'd like to print it or you've purchased it before, you'll get an update link. And I'm also gonna chuck down in the description the Fusion 360 files for this bearing. They're also free on my Patreon page for my wonderful Patreon supporters if you'd like to give this a shot. And if you did enjoy this video, guys, I would love to have you subscribe to Make This Music. It's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. These have been really fun to play with. They're like the new fidget spinner. <laughs> fidget spinner 2.0. Oh, and I've got a new shirt. I completely forgot to mention that. Look. I finally got some merch. It's a G-Code Maker's Muse logo. It's made of actual G-Code numbers. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the Teespring integration should be down in the description and below it if you're interested in picking one up. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.